Hey everybody, today we're going to get into scatter plots. A scatter plot's a visual display of data when you have more than one variable collected at a time. This is important, it comes up a lot. Um, often in the real world, when we're collecting data, we're not just collecting one piece of information. For example, we might have map and verbal scores on the SAT for a bunch of students, or heights and weights of a lot of different people in a medical study. Um, we might have engine size and gas mileage for a bunch of cars, or um, data on sales and advertising for different candy bars. Now, it's important to realize that in each of these cases, the data is paired. That is, each value for the first variable matches up exactly um, and specifically with one value for the second variable. They're not just two lists of values, they match up one to one. Um, and if you have that situation, you can draw a scatter plot. So here's an example. In this table, every column is going to represent a scientific or engineering field. The number on top is going to be the number of PhDs awarded um, in that field to women in 2005. And the number on the bottom is going to represent the number of PhDs awarded to men in 2005. So let's plot these. We plot the women as x values, the men as y values, and we get a bunch of points. I've labeled a few of them. For example, in the upper right, we have 2,168 comma 2,227. That's matching up with the second data column in that table. It's a scientific, scientific field where in 2005, 2,168 PhDs were awarded to women and 2,227 were awarded to men. It's good to be able to describe scatter plots qualitatively. So, for example, here we see a general downward shape to the data. Certainly, that's not true deterministically. As you read from left to right, there's certainly plenty of values where, or certainly plenty of points where you go upward as you go from left to right. Um, but generally, the shape of the data is downward sloping. We say these two variables are negatively associated in a situation like that. Now you're going to be tempted to say there's a negative correlation here. You should resist that temptation. We want to hold that word back, correlation, for the situation where the association is linear. That is to say that the graph has a, a shape like a straight line. That's not the case here. One other thing to observe in this plot is that we have that outlier in the upper right. It, it's a point that lies outside the usual pattern of the data. Um, outliers can fall into several different categories. This could just be a flat-out mistake, like a data entry error. It could be a bizarre case that, uh, that will throw off our analysis if we keep it in. Or it could be an interesting phenomenon that we should specifically direct our attention towards. Last thing we should say about scatter plots. It's important to think a little bit about which variable you're putting on the horizontal axis and which one goes on the vertical. If you have two variables where one can naturally be viewed as explaining the other for the purposes of some study, then that should go on the horizontal axis. We'll call that the explanatory variable. Similarly, the, ver the variable being explained should go on the vertical axis. We'll call that the response variable. For example, in the um, gas mileage example, it makes sense to view mileage as being explained by engine size, by engine displacement. So we'll put mileage going vertically. Now, of course, there's a little bit of subjectivity to that. You could imagine a scenario in which you might want to view the gas mileage as doing the explaining. But in general, I think it's a lot more natural to put the engine displacement on the horizontal axis.